The hero's journey is an algorithmic pattern of transformation. These patterns are the experiences we must confront when leaving our comfort zone of our perceived reality. A hero desires a want that is left unfulfilled. He will go through a series of transformative steps to discover a deeper unconscious need. For the story to grip us at an emotional level, we must feel empathy with the hero. We relate to people like us who perceive the same world we do. This doesn't mean the hero must be good, but it's mandatory that he is relatable. Heroes are propelled by universal impulses we can all understand. Everybody desires to be loved and understood. Everybody wants to succeed, survive, be free, take revenge, or fix mistakes and injustices from the past. We feel empathy towards relatable people in a position of injustice in which their perception of reality might be the correct one, yet they are fighting a system that is oppressing them. Most heroes go through an arc of change in which by the end of the story, they are no longer the same person. They might have started being apathetic, arrogant, or indecisive, and by the end of the arc, they become active, humble, and decisive. Some heroes don't change. Instead, they have control over their own narrative, so they catalyze the rest of the world to change. The world will test their narrative to know how real it is in the physical world. If it fails to meet with reality, then the hero's arc is a tragedy. If the hero's perception of reality is the truth, then the world is no longer a tragedy. Storytelling is the method of making people see a new life perspective of experiencing the 800-pound gorilla who walks on a stage unbeknownst to the audience. We like having our biases be proven wrong by providing a deeper and more meaningful need that had been left unfulfilled. A good story can change our perception and help us change the biases of our interpretation of reality. The ordinary world of the hero means stagnation. It could mean that the hero is living a monotonous life where patterns of meaning don't seem to change. You have a problem with authority, Mr. Anderson. You believe that you are special, that somehow the rules do not apply to you. Obviously, you are mistaken. The hero may be comfortable in his routines, or not, and wants to remain predictable enough for everyone in the tribe. I'm warning you now, boy. Any funny business any at all, and you won't have any meals for a week. Nothing. Now you just help us out today and find yourself a place where you won't get into any trouble. But things are not bound to stay like this forever. They can't. If we stagnate for too long, it means that somewhere, someone else, or another group is gathering resources or building a different infrastructure that could topple our world of meaning. The contrast between the ordinary world and the special world is clear. In the film Wizard of Oz, Dorothy begins in a world without color and a life that is tedious. But she is then transported into the world of Oz, a bright new reality. In war movies, the hero is transported from a meaningful, coherent world into a chaotic, senseless industrial war without meaning a world in which reality ultimately becomes disharmonious and the hero combats the force of resistance to rectify reality. Desiring change, the new special world compels us to deteriorate ourselves from an ordinary world, creating ambiguity, chaos, and obstacles that must be overcome. We are in a constant loop of freeing ourselves from an enslaving, monotonous world to transition ourselves from a subjugated existence towards a life of freedom, which will at one point become another enslaving existence. Ad infinitum. Hello? Cruiser. Help me, Obi-Wan Kenobi. You're my only help. What's this? The 
the hero may receive a letter, a phone call, or a message that will inform him he must embark on a new direction and life is about to change. The call to adventure may come in the form of a messenger bringing an envelope or a photograph that will entice the hero into another world. A villain may emerge, disrupting the routines of the tribe, and a new reality may be imposed on the community. Sometimes the hero has no available options and will be forced to join an experience without consent. There are heroes who volunteer and who look for adventure, only to be tested by the outside world. Reality will test the hero relentlessly to find out if the protagonist is ready to change. Wait, wait, I just want to say thanks for killing those things. Ah! Damn! A hero will face resistance throughout the journey rigorously. Reality may be transformed, but the hero is bound to face resistance since it is part of the universal experience. No matter which side you fight the battle on, or which team you are part of, resistance is an inescapable presence. Reality must be transformed through obstacles that the hero must overcome to better understand the different prisms of reality that surround us. Heroes that commit wholeheartedly to the new world are rare. The hero will fight the call to adventure, a manifestation of the resistance, a force that envelops us on a daily basis. We are like fish inside an aquarium, and the resistance is the water we cannot see. So, before the protagonist becomes a fish out of water, he will most likely refuse the call to adventure, because he must come face to face with a defined force. The new world will ultimately turn his previously known world into an unbiased reality, so the hero must appease the guardians at the gate of change. Before we carry out a dramatic change within ourselves, we will face inevitable and numerous obstacles. These tests and obstacles exist to be certain that these modifications coincide with the reality of the outside world. Resistance will defy our change before doing permanent shifts in our psyche. People who may love us unconditionally, but may feel comfortable with patterns of meanings they have formed about the world. We like predictable patterns because we want to anticipate the future. We create rituals and stories to put everyone we care about into the same frequency. If a sheep runs away from the herd, it risks losing its grip on a social grid. We like to tell ourselves that we have understood the laws that govern the reality at this moment in time. Refusing a call is inevitable. Resistance imposes a harsh reality check on us before departing from a soon-to-be carcass. Wake up! How did you find the piece of resistance? The piece of what? The piece of resistance. A hero must appease a force that will try to disqualify the hero from changing worlds. The guardian at the gate is an energy that may come in a multitude of shapes and forms, a force that will test the hero to think twice before crossing a demarcated line. It may be a literal guard who impedes the hero from transitioning. Is there any law against me getting something here? Yeah, me. It's completely unacceptable. What made you think that you could put your hands on my fiance? Look at me, you fool! Not if I can help it. You talk funny, Nash. Where are you from? Lots of different places. Why are you armed, Quintus? Guards! Please don't fight, Maximus. Or an energy that comes in the form of an internal struggle filled with neurosis. The hero may be fighting back past experiences which have left scars traumas that the hero is trying to hide, burying them deep inside his subconscious. It's a test that will try to block the hero from committing to a journey that will turn his world upside down. To appease the guardian of the threshold, the hero must mirror the force he is trying to fight against, 
The hero must understand, perhaps feel empathy towards a being with its own internal problems to deal with. In martial arts, fighters use their opponent's strength against them. To approach a herd of buffalo, the Native Americans used to wear the animal's skin, incorporating the hunt within themselves before going for the kill. The hero may become temporarily the guardian at the gate. It is a force that deters the hero, intimidating him from going any further into an unknown reality. In society, many people fail to bypass the guardian and remain struck in a monotonous, unchanging world of conformity. In neuroscience, this resistance is called the critical factor, a term that explains the way the subconscious protects itself from wrong thinking. Like an organism, the brain defends itself from enemy intruders trying to corrupt the body cell. When this wall comes down, there will be no quarter. to bury your guilt with anger. I will teach you to confront it and to face the truth. You know how to fight six men. We can teach you how to engage 600. The hero has refused the call to adventure, but to gather the courage to continue on with his journey, he will gain the skills and orientations from an old wise man or woman. I'm looking for someone. Looking? Found someone you have, I would say. <laughs> right. It's an honor to meet you. No. The honor is mine. Mentor means mentis in Greek, which signifies mind and intelligence. Never lose your temper. If your head comes away from your neck, it's over. First, and understand this, Harry, because it's very important. Not all wizards are good. Some of them go bad. A few years ago, there was one wizard that went as bad as you can go, and his name was... The coach helps the hero with training and sometimes gives gifts that can be later used in the new special world of the unconscious. I understand you're a man that knows how to get things. I'm known to locate certain things time to time. This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. Not as clumsy or random as a blaster. The mentor is an old wise man or woman who has gone through a similar path that the hero is trying to pursue. Sometimes the mentors can come in the shape of an ethics code that teaches new conducts to the hero. Right the circle, left the circle, and wrong the stroke. They can also come in the form of a soon to be shadow figure in the life of the hero tricking the audience into what the new morals of the special world are. This is not how a man was supposed to live. The League of Shadows has been a check against human corruption for thousands of years. We sacked Rome, loaded trade ships with plague rats, burned London to the ground. Every time a civilization reaches the pinnacle of its decadence, we return to restore the balance. Sometimes, the mentor comes in the shape of a person in decline, on the threshold of death, looming in self-doubt. I've seen much of the rest of the world. It is brutal and cruel and dark. Rome is the light. Yet you have never been there. You have not seen what it has become. I am dying, Maximus. When a man sees his end, he wants to know there was some purpose to his life. The mentor will help the hero until a certain point, but it is then up to the hero to step into the special world. This is your last chance. After this, there is no turning back. You take the blue pill, the story ends. You wake up in your bed and believe whatever you want to believe. You take the red pill, you stay in Wonderland, and I show you how deep the rabbit hole goes. Fears and doubts have been confronted. The 
the guardian at the gate has been appeased, and the hero has reached a demarcated line in the sand. The crossing to the new special world may come in the manifestation of a portal, a door, a bridge, or anything that resembles an entrance. The passage may be solitary or filled with color and intensity. The hero gathers courage, but the bravery is soon extinguished as soon as the hero comes into contact with the new special world. The hero will most likely fall flat on his face, literally or figuratively. The crossing is a traumatic event, bringing the hero to his knees and making him a beginner once again. The crossing must show a division between two worlds, the world of the hero's conscious awareness and first contact with the world of the unconscious. A clear before and after contrast. I can't let you touch it, that would defeat the purpose. See, only I know the balance and the weight of this particular loaded die. That way, when you look at your totem, you know beyond a doubt that you're not in someone else's dream. Most of my crew, you already know. This is APOC, Switch, and Cypher. Hi. The ones you don't know, Tank, and his big brother, Dozer. The hero has committed himself to achieve his external goal. There is no turning back now to the ordinary world. I didn't say it would be easy, Neil. I just said it would be the truth. Stop! Achieving his external goal becomes increasingly more difficult and much more critical for the hero to reach the peak of the journey. So, where are you from? Who cares? I can't go back. The hero will gain new insights into the special world by going through trials. All right, let's go again. Forcing him to learn the rules of the new world. You don't have time to think. Remember. It's not enough knowing where they're going to be. You have to know how to kill them. Preparing him for the life or death ordeals of future events. You have to let it all go, Neil. Fear, doubt, and disbelief. Free your mind. The hero will also make new friends that will help him face obstacles together. The hero will form part of a team, and together, they will discover new territories and go through incremental tests facing pressure and forcing them to adapt to a new world. This was your responsibility. You were meant to check Fisher's background thoroughly. We are not prepared for this type of violence. We have to counterbalance his newfound allies, the hero will encounter resistance through the shadow of the unconscious with his dark subsidiaries. And I'm Malfoy. Draco Malfoy having to spend some time to figure out who can be trusted. I don't want to remember nothing. Nothing. You understand? The hero must adapt to a new reality unknown to him, as if he was a fish discovering a fresh new aquarium. The world feels as if the hero has awakened a giant, a manifestation of the dark shadows of the unconscious. The dark clouds of the unconscious work as a resistance blocking the hero from reaching his goals. Wanting to impede the hero from continually disrupting the equilibrium of the perceived reality. Neo. No one has ever done anything like this. That's why it's going to work. The hero and his friends have now reached another line in the sand. At this point, they will gather their energy, prepare and organize the group before entering a new and more dangerous phase of the unconscious. We're going that way, straight as we can. The hero and his allies will soon confront growing dark shadows of the special world. That's no moon. It's a space station.
Don't look in the camera. Say something. Keep it going. Keep it going. He's gone. Cut transmission! Cut transmission? Cut it! And face even greater pressure from the resistance. It becomes ever more difficult to achieve the goal, but simultaneously much more vital for the goal to be reached. At this point in the journey, masks are interchanged and the team may have to reorganize the group to optimize their actions as a whole. He's out. Wait, whose subconscious are we going into exactly? I'm going into Fisher's. I told him it was Browning so he'd come be a part of our team. He's gonna help us break into his own subconscious. That's right. Resistance will increase incrementally with each step the hero takes that brings him closer to the objective. For every good news, there will be a consequential negative effect from the resistance. The hero faces dark forces that evoke doubts and conflicts with his internal underlying emotions that impede the protagonist from developing into another being of existence. I'm fine, I'm, I'm ready. a subdivision into the unconscious that brings them deeper into the special world, a fractal component of the new world that must be peeled away and understood to reveal a deeper essence of life. What's down there? Hopefully the truth we want Fisher to learn. I mean, what's down there for you? Do you think I'm afraid? I think you've been afraid all your life. We want to increase the odds of the hero reaching his objective for our emotions to become ever more empathic with a character who is now part of us. The approach is a gradual ascent towards a revelation perhaps unbeknownst to the hero. It's the stage in which the stakes are even higher and heroes encounter the struggle between life and death. Don't just stand there and try and brace it with something. There is a type of urgency as if we were witnessing a ticking bomb in which time and efficiency is of the essence. At this stage, members get promoted while others may get hit and wounded by the resistance. The hero and his allies may get into the adversary's mind and territory by temporarily becoming the enemy. They may wear the enemy's colors by camouflaging through uniforms and disguises. I don't like this. This, this is stupid. They can see us. Oh, no, no, no. This thing comes fully loaded. Hey, man, from radio, reclining bucket seats, and our window. The team may get to use violence if necessary to enter and invade the inmost cave of the resistance, which could lead the team to confront a moment of no escape, like rats stuck inside a labyrinth. Damn. What the hell just happened? An agent, you have to send me back. I can't. Mr. Anderson. This is the critical point in the story in which all previous events have culminated into one truth. This looks familiar. Mm. Where have I seen this before? Let me think. Mm. It's an ultimate revelation of what the new reality of the special world consists of. Make him stay, Merv. Don't let me leave, Merv. This single event is a permanent rupture with the past. Ooh, yes, I remember. This is just the way your father looked before he died. <gasps> this is the moment in which an old self dies through a stage in which the hero faces his shadow. Is that the best you can do? You're gonna have to kill me! My little secret. I killed Fossa. No! The 
projections of his fears and the forces crippling him into submitting to resistance. The confrontation with the shadow leads to a moment in which the audience feels that all is lost and the hero may die. Yet, in the midst of crisis, the hero can raise himself up through a revelation of what it means to be in the special world. It won't work! Climb it, Mother! Climb it, Mark! We'll never get my new speed! Yes, we will! truth and ultimately defeats resistance with a deadly blow now get up The hero has the epiphany that he has become larger than resistance. The hero is the king of his own story. He has control over his own narrative. We feel as if the hero has been reborn from a near-death experience into the surface with oxygen and relief. We feel as if we have died with the hero, that we have left an old carcass behind and that we have emerged from a journey into a being with a better grasp and understanding of what it means to be alive. What happens now? Now? You go home. Alice! 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 Will you kindly pay attention and recite your lesson? Hmm? Dear Red, if you're reading this, you've gotten out. And if you've come this far, maybe you're willing to come a little further. Oh, uh, how doth the little crocodile improve his shining tail and pour the waters up the... Alice, what are you talking about? It wasn't a dream. It was a place. And you, and you... 
And you were there. Oh, <laughs> But you couldn't have been, could you? Well, we dream lots of silly things when we... No, Aunt Em. This was a real, truly live place. And I remember that some of it wasn't very nice, but most of it was beautiful. But just the same, all I kept saying to everybody was, I want to go home. The old ego feels as if it has experienced transcendence and that a new being has emerged from the journey. Come back. So we can be young men together again. The hero walks differently, as if he or she can feel a special awareness of conscience, previously unfelt. The hero may return to the ordinary world with an altered perception, a gift, or some reward that symbolizes the transformation. Sometimes, the hero realizes that the reward has always been within himself, but he needed to cross paths with dangerous forces to give more value to what he already had. The reward is often buried in the ordinary world, clearly present, but was hidden in the unconscious, invisible due to limited awareness of life. But you see, the caterpillar said... Caterpillar? Oh, for goodness sake. Alice, I... Oh, well, come along, it's time for tea. Storytellers want to culminate the story into a crescendo, where an underlying message is revealed. The protagonist understands and perhaps wants to appease an internal pain crippling him in the old world. The world that surrounds the protagonist accepts a new reality. The tribe lets go of an old world, of its resistance, and finally changes for good. The climax must overwhelm the audience's subconscious into surrendering the psyche to a new perspective. The apex is a new prism a clearer lens in which the audience can now see something that was previously imperceptible. The audience lets go of control and capitulates to the transcendent feeling of a transformative awareness.